Following up on Call of Duty 1 was a big challenge. We weren't sure which direction we wanted to take it. Come behind the scenes with Infinity Ward as they face the challenges and triumphs of creating Call of Duty 2. When we first started out, Infinity Ward was 22 members of the Medal of Honor Allied Assault team that worked out in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In 2002, Infinity Ward began work on the original Call of Duty. We knew that we had money. We were just, this is money. We put it on the table. You need to play this. The news of that prototype just went through Activision like wildfire. The game quickly evolved into a groundbreaking departure for World War II first-person shooters, earning it over 80 Game of the Year awards. That set like a pretty high bar for Call of Duty 2. What are we going to do differently? How are we going to top that? Well, one of the things about Call of Duty 1 uh, were some people felt it was a little too linear. So we wanted to open up the gameplay. This required reinventing the AI completely because we didn't know which direction the player would be approaching an objective from. So. You can't just pre-plan a course and do a series of scripted events. You need to really algorithmically figure out how to respond to what the player's gonna do from any angle. So we had to create very autonomous AI. AI that could retreat from his position, can set up ambushes, can try to flank the player. They've got vision cones, hearing radiuses. They're just much more self-aware than they were in Call of Duty 1. And that was a huge, huge change, a huge overhaul. And it caused us to basically throw out the Call of Duty 1 engine and create our own proprietary technology. There were a lot of challenges that we encountered. Basically, we just made the level we wanted to make and played the game and watched where the AI fell down, and then had to go to the drawing board and try to figure out how to, how to solve these problems. So we did that for a year and a half, basically, just constantly working on the AI, improving it, tweaking it, tuning it until we got to the point where we liked it. Move in! Hassle! Come on, let's go! So one of the things that came out of the nonlinear gameplay mixed with the all-new AI was how do we make this AI even more important to the player and make him appreciate his friendly troops more. And basically what came out of that was the concept of this battle chatter system, where the AI understand the field of battle they call out enemy troops, they call out position. Now we made the AI so autonomous that they knew where they were, wherever they were on the map. Any location, if they were on a second floor of a building, if they were behind a wall. They had to know exactly where their surroundings were. Your AI is very self-aware, and they're telling you what their current situation is, what the enemy is doing. And really brings that player in, into being part of that squad. And for any of our fans that speak German, you can hear that we brought that same contact-sensitive battle chatter system over to the Germans. We came up with true military terms, how they actually communicate with each other, as well as look at all the levels in the game and geometry and basically gave it all names. Then we had to record over 20,000 lines of dialogue, put that in code, you know, so that the AI knows about it. One of the big challenges was striking just the right sweet spot. We didn't want it happening too much because then it's just noise and it fades into the background. And if it happens not enough, it's not as useful to the player as it could be. We have two military advisors that were really instrumental with developing Call of Duty. We asked them, what, what were the things that were missing from Call of Duty 1 that you see on the battlefield, that you experienced every day? And they said, well, there's portable concealment. Wait! Into the smoke All right, go! Let's go! Portable concealment, AKA smoke, has been used in warfare for over 150 years, and there's none of it in Call of Duty 1. So we created this really robust particle system, and it just adds a real level of immersion that we didn't have before. We have a lot of great level designers who do a lot of research and are inspired by real events. So on the Duhawk level, for example, you know, the Rangers actually did scale the, the cliff face, and the guns had actually been moved, and they did actually have to go find the guns. We storyboard out this stuff, and it was soldiers start on the Higgins boat on the way in, soldiers are on the beaches, soldiers scaled the cliffs. It was a lot more complicated when we implemented it than what we saw just from the storyboards. That whole level took a massive effort from a large group of people for a few months before we had the, the E3 trade show. And 
you know, two weeks in and you're just like, I don't see it, you know, three weeks in, don't see it, four weeks in, there's something going on here, five weeks in, wow, we got some magic. Keeping up their high standards for authenticity, the team did extensive research, including sending design teams to North Africa and France. We had an artist and a game designer to check out what a real North African village looks like. We also sent um, a few artists to Normandy to check out French villages. There's a big difference between how Americans perceive a French village and how they really are laid out. And it really kind of caused a big redesign for a lot of stuff. Probably the, the biggest challenge that we had, I think maybe a month into development of that, Microsoft came to Activision and said, we want Call of Duty to be a launch title exclusive to the Xbox 360. We told them it's not gonna be a problem, we're gonna knock it out of the park. And then we got back to our office and we were like, okay, we have to somehow plan to use a bunch of art techniques that haven't been invented yet, so let's design those in. We need to design the game for hardware that doesn't exist. We need to schedule out workflows for people who we haven't even hired yet. I think that was just a real kind of amazing thing, how you can kind of visualize how this stuff is gonna work out, how you're gonna hire these people, how you're going to work on this hardware. And just through sheer force of will and people working late hours and having a lot of passion, how it just all really kind of came together.